This video is brought to you by BetUS. Use promo code ICEMAN. You're going to get a 125% deposit bonus matching your initial deposit. All the other promo codes on their website is a split between casino and sports. If you use promo code ICEMAN, you're going to get 125% all sports. All right, let's get into uh, the UFC coming up. We got Brian Ortega, Yair Rodriguez in the main event. If you guys watched our last prediction video, we went six for three. Our main loss, we lost to Rafael Dos Anjos. Uh, he was a big underdog on that card. However, I placed two bets. I made my one big bet, which was Saeed Nurmagomedov parlayed with Chao Bohala for a double up. And I also made money, uh, placed a bet on uh, Rafael Dos Anjos, which... Uh, pooped it um a lot of you guys messaging me like oh i i told you i was feeling fazeev oh you're feeling fazeev uh send me the bet receipt oh no i didn't bet on him oh shut the fuck up you're telling me you're feeling this guy you didn't bet on him no i don't bet you're a loser dude i see this all the time oh my uh, these other guy I watch he's got prediction videos he went 75 percent last ufc oh, oh your buddy went 75 percent does he pl sh place show his bets no, he doesn't bet on it. What? Dude, it, this shit drives me nuts. I don't know how many people I see giving predictions. Guys like the Weasel from Josh Thompson and fucking Big John, Brendan Schaub to Luke Thomas in the morning, whatever these guys. None of these guys are showing you their bets because none of them make bets. They just give you predictions, but they're not putting their money where their mouth is. Drives me nuts. It's like the idiot who was feeling fazeev. You're feeling fazeev? You didn't put money on it, though. No? So don't talk to me about it, bro. If you're not putting money on it, if you're putting money on fazeev, send me the bet receipts and be like, oh, I told you I was feeling fazeev. But, like, no, you're not feeling shit. You're not putting your money where your mouth is. It drives me nuts. I'm the only person on here putting my bet receipts, win or lose. It is what it is. Anyways, let's get into the card. Dwight Grant, first fight versus Dustin Stolfes. So, Dwight Grant um, coming off two straight losses. One of them was a split decision to uh, Francisco Trinaldo um, and the other guy, Sergey Kandoska. And he's taking on Dustin Stolfes, um coming off three straight losses. Does the UFC really need these guys? Probably not, but it is what it is. They got these um, lame ass fighters on here. I mean, they're not like there's so many good guys the UFC can get. Um, for example, they got Vagab Vagago, whatever his name is, Vagab. Dude, nobody knows about this guy. Can, can we get? start a thing, get Vagab in the UFC. This guy's got to do boxing matches because no one wants to fight him in MMA, 29-1. and one. Can we get this guy in the UFC already? No, Yeah, most of you guys, oh, I don't know, even know who that is. Yeah, none of you guys fucking know shit about MMA. You guys just watch UFC. Let me tell you, UFC is not only MMA. There's a lot of other organizations with good fighters. So, yeah, let's get that Vagab guy in 29-1 and one in the UFC. Anyways, for this car, a fight, I'll go with Dwight Grant. Next, Dustin Jacoby versus Da Eun Jung. This is a good fight battle. Of really two good strikers. Dustin Jacoby, he's a kickboxer. He's on a big win streak, too. I think he's got like six or seven straight wins. Um, he was fighting all the way at heavyweight. Then he went to light heavyweight. And I think now he's at uh, middleweight, I believe. Um. And he was one of those guys who was in glory, so not too many UFC fighters, you know, fighting glory. So it tells you how high level his uh, striking is. And then Du Eun Jung, this guy's on a roll himself. He hasn't lost since 2015, and that was his third MMA fight. You know, since then, he's on a 12-fight win streak. Um, most notably, his win over Kennedy and Jack Wu, he won by knockout. With some vicious elbows. However, I think it's going to be a stand-up match. And I think uh, Dustin Jacoby should pull away with it. Um, I was 
going to bet the over, to be honest, but then I'm just going to take Justin Jacoby just because um, Dune Jung has got a lot of knockouts. And uh, Jacoby's um, he's got some knockouts too, but I just have a feeling Jacoby, if it's going to be striking, Jacoby's going to pull away with it. In the Bantamweight division, we got Ricky Simone versus Jack Shore. So actually, guys, I um, my main bet on this card was a guy by the name Kusain Askabov. He's 23-0, and he just pulled out. He was supposed to fight Herbert Burns. Dude, that guy was going to be one of my ice picks parlayed with uh, Muslim Salikov, or, and it was just beautiful. If I can, maybe I'll place the bet here, but one of them is going to be void because Kusain pulled out. Yeah. So it just pissed me off because that guy really wanted to bet on uh, some of these R- Russians that no one knows about that are coming over 23 0, you know, just crazy records. They're going to crush people, and you got to bet them early. But, anyways, Ricky Simone, Jack Shore. Um, Ricky Simone's only lost to top dudes. And he's on a four-fight win streak. Uh, he lost to Rob Font and Uriah Faber. And most notably, he knocked out Rafael Sunsau his last fight. But uh, Sunsau is coming off a vicious knockout loss himself to Cody Nochin Garbrandt. Um, I really like Jack Shore, though. Jack Shore has been looking really good and impressive. His last fight against Timur Valiev, who's a wicked fighter, I believe his record was 18 and two at the time. Um, Jack Shore ran through him and he dominated team air. So he won a unanimous decision. I like Jack Shore in this fight. I think he's great. 16 and 0. Jack Shore is the real deal. I think this is going to be a striking match and I'm going to take Jack Shore on this one. It's going to be tight though. Ricky Simone is tough. I could see this fight going the distance for sure. Next, we have Punahali Soriano versus Dalcha Lungbong. I don't even know how to pronounce it. This Dalcha guy sucks, dude. Um, I mean, he doesn't suck. Like He's got a one win over Marcus Perez, which was okay, but he got knocked out by Magomed Ankalaev and finished by Cody Brundage, his last fight. Cody Brundage, we took the last UFC And Soriano is he's good. He's um he's coming off two straight losses to Nick Maximov, who's uh Nick Diaz and Diaz brothers training partner, and before that it was Brandon Allen, a unanimous decision. Eight wins, two losses. This is gonna be I'm taking Soriano on this one. I just I'm not a fan of this Dolce guy, so I'm going with Soriano on that one. Next, we got Shane Burgos versus Charles Air Jordan. This is surprising. The fact that Shane Burgos on my other website, he was more than minus 225. On here, he's minus 190. The fact that they're counting Charles Jordan out, um, I don't know if I agree with that so much. But they expect this to be a striking match, and that is Shane Burgos. He's a really good striker. His only loss is coming to Barbosa, Emmett, and Cater. But he got knocked out by Cater and Edson, and lost a decision to Emmett. His last fight, he beat Billy Quarantillo. And Charles Jordan, he beat Lando Venata his last fight with that beautiful guillotine. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the over on this fight. I think uh, this fight's going to go over. I don't think uh, anyone's getting knocked out, and I don't think any submissions should happen. If it does, maybe Charles Jordan might guillotine him or something. But I think this fight, I'm taking the over two and a half on this one. Next, Matt Schnell versus Sue Matajeri. Matt Schnell just... They've been using him just as a guy, as a stepping stone. He got just ran through by Brandon Royval his last fight. I do think this is going to be a closer fight than people are giving 
uh, Matt Schnell credit for. He's plus 210. I don't know if I'd give him that horrible odds. I mean, well, good odds if you're betting on it, but... Yeah, I'm going to go with Sub Madagiri on that one. Next, Li Jing Liang versus Muslim Salikov. So, like I told you guys, my main picks were going to be Kasein Askabov parlayed with Salikov. Askabov, the guy who's 23 0, uh, pulled out horrible, horrible. Pisses me off because that was going to be easy money. Easy double up, bro. I was going to easily slam big on that one with Salikov because. Most of you guys who be like, who's this Muslim Salikov? Because you guys know the leech. Because he got just demolished by uh, Hamzat Chemaev. But Muslim Salikov, this guy's he's got 200 kickboxing fights. Crazy striker. Really good striker. Only been knocked out once in over 200 kickboxing fights. And he's got 20 MMA fights. And he's only been knocked out once. And that was in kickboxing. And it was a while ago. He's just a wicked striker, dude. Um, he had a split decision loss to... They have a similar opponent. Uh, Aleski Zaleski Dos Santos. S- a similar opponent. Muslim won a split. And Jing Liang knocked him out. But I'll tell you the difference. Muslim Salikov, if you watch that fight with Dos Santos, he was dominating the striking to the point where that's the only time I've seen Dos Santos want to take the fight down. And he stole one of the rounds by using his grappling. Thing is, Li Jing Liang is not a grappler. He likes to strike and he likes to bang. And that's going to fit right into Muslim Salikov style. He's got 200 kickboxing fights, and he's got a wicked iron chin. I think he's just going to outstrike the leech all day. The leech, if he wants to win, he's got to grapple. However, he does not like to grapple much. So I think this is just going to play right into Muslim's hands, and I'm going Muslim Salikov all day. Next, we got the main event of the evening. This is a wicked fight uh, between the two Mexicans. Mexican-American versus the Mexican. Um, so, yeah, your Rodriguez is the better striker. Brian Ortega is the better grappler. Both guys have dog shit wrestling or takedowns for that matter. Brian Ortega does have wicked jiu-jitsu, but, you know, as seen in the Volkanovski fight, he needs to work on that finishing skills. Because he had, they call him T-City, but he had a fully locked-in triangle and just just horrible the way he was able to try and finish it. If you guys don't know, I do jiu-jitsu 15 years, I'm a jiu-jitsu instructor, and if anything I know best, it is Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And Brian Ortega, they give him a lot of hype. Yeah, he's Henner Gracie's kid or whatever. But yeah, Henner Gracie and these guys, they're not the greatest jujitsu guys for MMA. This, uh, yeah, so. Who am I taking, though? That's the real question. Who am I taking? Uh, your Rodriguez or Brian Ortega? I'm going with the over. I'm going to take over two and a half on this one. I... Like I said, I think Brian Ortega is probably going to get pieced up on the feet. I could see that. But I can also see Brian Ortega getting his ass whooped for three rounds and somehow snatching up some miracle guillotine or something like that. Yeah, your Rodriguez jiu-jitsu is pretty good, though. But I don't know if it's on the level of a Brian Ortega. I haven't really seen too much of his jiu-jitsu. But hopefully Brian Ortega has been working on his jiu-jitsu because it did not look good against Volkanovski. Just horrible finishing capability. But that's also a credit to Volkanovski. But when you get someone in those positions that Brian Ortega had, there's no excuse for not being able to finish it. Um, anyways, Yair Rodriguez. Don't want to strike with Yair. Have you guys seen in the Max fight? He's a wicked striker. So I would not be surprised if Yair wins a decision in this one. I would not be surprised at all. I just don't like betting on Yair Rodriguez because you don't know which Yair you're going to get. 
and you don't know which Brian Ortega you're going to get. And thing is with Brian Ortega though, he will take a beating for five rounds. He's got a he's got a good chin and he will take the shit kicking. So I'm going with the over on that one. And uh yeah, I'm, my main bet like I said was Kusain and Salikov. I'm going to have to you know, put a new one. Maybe I'll put it throw it on my Instagram or whatever, but those are your um, picks for UFC Ortega versus Rodriguez. And uh, yeah, good luck. Out.